Hello users, it's Özgün here. In this tutorial, we are gonna talk about how to finish the mastering and rendering process and how to make the track ready to send to the labels. In the first episode, it was the final mix down video. So I show you how I'm making my final mix downs before I release my tracks. And in this tutorial, we are gonna finalize the mastering. And top of that, I'm gonna show you step by step the rendering process which settings best to use and also which kind of file types that you should send to the labels. And if you're ready, let's get into that tutorial. Okay, we are inside of the FL Studio. As you remember, we just are finished mixing, like finalizing this idea. So this was the idea that we finished the mix down in the first episode of this video. After finalizing the mix down and when I start the mastering process, I just make at first I just make uh, my clipper 0 dB again so it doesn't give any of the gain. And I like to use an EQ to cut the lows like till 150. And I'm just cutting the side information so it makes my bass totally mono. By the way, this is actually not crucial in this days because most of the systems can handle a bit of stereo sub. So if you think like cutting the sides, changing your sound that much, and if you like the previous version of it, just don't cut that. Okay, in the EQ, I actually don't do that much stuff the first thing i check is am i clipping in the track like what is my gain levels and i'm just checking it with the meter <laughs> So yeah, if I don't clip, getting so much clipping in the master. So in this case, I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna make my gain staging. After EQ, I'm sending a signal that is not clipping. Now let's listen. So I just gave myself six decibels of headroom. Now I'm not clipping. That is, that's what I was looking for. And after that, I probably color my track. In this stage, I most of the time get a reference track. Check, check the coloring, check the waveform, check the spectrum, analyze this with span and compare with mine. And I usually use this uh, TR5 Master EQ. This has a really nice color when you tweak it or just use a preset. But you can just find any of the similar coloring EQ. So yeah, the thing I made, uh, like it has three bands, uh, low, mid and high. And I like to boost the 4K area just a little bit. So it gives some clarity to the mix. It makes it, a, it gives my mix times a bit more life, if it makes sense. Okay, let's try to boost it. The reason I'm not using FAB filter or any other EQ, this kind of EQ has got its own color. That's what I'm uh, searching for. And after boosting the mids, it's good to boost or check like 12K or 8K area and, and see if it's give more clarity to the sound if you boost that uh, frequencies. Let's make it like this. And let's try to boost 12K first. I 
I think 8, 9K boost, just a little bit, giving a clarity and presence to my mix. I'm gonna go with that. And in this pan, I just realized like we are lacking 4 to 500 hertz, which gives the track some warmth and body. Um, let's try to boost that frequencies as well. This is in that point, I usually like if my reference track uh, like has full at that point, I mostly go back to my mix down and fix it in the mix. Maybe I boost. Maybe I can boost the bass or something, but it's always good to check if you can fix it on the master. Maybe if you boost that frequencies just a little bit, it's gonna it's it's gonna look good in span. So let's try to boost four to five hundred hertz. You know, maybe like 1 dB or something. So I don't need to go back to mixing and fix it. I think it sounds decent now. After making this coloring, you can do it with any EQ, but just to know what you are doing. I like to go exciting. So I have this preset. I'm just exciting the top two bands, uh, the upper mids and the highs. And let's start with zero and just give it a little bit until we hear some of the crispness in the top end, which is giving the sound a more professional touch. I just see this, I think, from Reggio, one of his tutorials, and it's working most of my cases. Let's try to solo this band and give it a bit of mix. Even if you want to give your mix a bit more presence, you can boost like the 5k area, which I'm going to do it now. Okay, now I'm happy with overall sounding. The thing I'm gonna do is to clip the hell out of it until it distorts. I'm gonna push it till limit. I'm using the hard knee, which is hard clipping. Uh, you can use any of the clippers. There are some free ones too, but make sure to you are making hard clip. So we are gonna use this one as a limiter, which I like to use in most of my latest tracks. Let's check with LFO tool. And after that, I'm going to add a fruity limiter, but it's just not going to do anything. I'm going to make my ceiling minus 0.1, but it makes the track more safe because because you are using a clipper, which is not a, the ideal way to maximize your track because you have limiters, maximizers, that kind of stuff. Uh, that's why after you putting a clipper, just to be safe, you can have a ceiling at 0.1 decibels minus 0.1 and you can just use it as it is. And it's gonna not do anything most of the time, but to be safe, you can just use this one. And yeah, this is basically my mastering chain. This is what I do. If my PC couldn't handle it, like my old laptop couldn't handle to master in the project itself, tend to go like render everything and make a stamp project, kind of stamp project. And I just master inside it because it's always good. Like we talk about, we are lacking 500 hertz. What if? If boosting it didn't fix the problem, I should go back to mix down, maybe EQ the individual channels. That, that's why I like to master my tracks inside of the project. And yeah, if it's too heavy, you have two options. You can make a stamp project and you can work, master the stamps, or you can render a 32-bit WAV file. But if you're faced with some coloring problems, you should go back to mix down, re-render everything. Yeah, that's something you should decide. Okay, this is enough for mastering. How are we gonna render the track and send to the labels? 
At first, you have to have two different versions. One version is the radio edit, which is like starting from, let's say, pre-break. <laughs> And the other version should start with the intro and you, and you can call one of them extended mix, one of them radio mix, something like that. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna render my drop. Yeah, let's, let's render it like this. So the thing I'm gonna make uh, to render a master 32-bit file at first, because you cannot send the labels 32-bit, 99% gonna ask you 16 bits or 24 bits. We are gonna render the master version first. And yeah, just don't forget to render extended and radio mix, like two different 32 bit masters. Let's say this is our radio mix, okay? I'm gonna render it like this. In here, choose 32 bits and use these settings. Even you can include tempo information, that's totally fine. You should trim PDC silence, it gives a little bit of gap in the beginning of the track. And especially if you are rendering split mixer tracks for STEM projects, STEM rendering, you should always have this. Other, if you don't have this, like everything is gonna shift and it's not gonna sync. The channels is not gonna sync with each other. And for resampling, we are gonna go for the maximum values. I think that's all. Let's choose song selection, leave reminder. You can just cut the reminder because you already determined the rendering area. Okay, let's render this one. So this is your master file. This is the file that you always need to keep. And in, in any cases, you can render any format from this file. That's why it's really important to have all the time. After you render the file, just put it to some empty project. And in this project, we are gonna do two different things. I'm gonna have a volume automation for the track. And I like to do that. I just like to start the track uh, one pixel late or maybe two. And I'm just gonna do it, just in case, you know, not to get any click or pop sound. By the way, as you see, like our master looks really decent. We have a bit of gap, but we are maximizing everything. Everything is its limits and it's a big, powerful track. And yeah, I can hear some questions. What about loose values and stuff? Yes, you can check that. Uh, or even you can check the RMS value, but you don't need to care about the Spotify loops. You can just boost the track to its limits and you can render that one. I never think the numbers, you know. I just think if all of my songs in full potential in the track. I don't care if Spotify asking me minus 14 loops in overall. I never do that. And all of my track sounds as good as my PC in Spotify. I think we shouldn't think that much about it. As long as your track is not clipping and sound good, you are good to go. And yeah, in the end of the chain, I'm just gonna do it like this. So I'm just fading out. And after that, we are gonna render this one once more. This time we are gonna call it Master Radio for Label. And the thing is, if you are reducing the bitrate, we are gonna render 16 or 24 bit for labels from 32 bit float file. If you are reducing the bitrate, so I mean you are rendering a higher resolution file to a lower resolution, you always need to have detailing. When you lower the resolution of the sound, you can create some artifacts and it can be so obvious and like can kind of destroy your mix or vibe, you couldn't even tell what's wrong. And if you choose detailing, it's gonna add some random noise to the sound and the brain couldn't tell the artifacts that is happening in a sync all the time. Detailing is just gonna cover uh, the artifacts that lowering resolution creates. That's why it's important if you are lowering the resolution, just choose deter. And yeah, we don't even have any master, so I can just remove them out and we are gonna choose mp3 as well let's go higher resolution and we are gonna choose render yeah that's all let's check the files okay let's take a listen to make sure
And yeah, guys, this is how I finalize my tracks after finishing my mix down. This is my regular process. My mastering chain is changing track to track. Sometimes I add glue compression. Sometimes I add another coloring EQ or maybe I don't use exciting. It can be various, but yeah, the, the, the core elements of my mastering chain totally was like this. And this is how I'm rendering my tracks to send to the labels. Now you can ready to upload it to SoundCloud, make a private link and just send your favorite label. I will not send all of the labels at first. You know, it's more professional to send a label, wait for their response. And like, if you don't hear them for a while, you can just go to the next label. All right, guys, today that was it. I hope you can apply this to your own productions too. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video. Bye bye.